as the health and fitness world can get a little nutty, it's time for body kindness. Today we're talking about the benefits of gratitude. We'll talk about why gratitude matters to body kindness and how to be grateful even when it's hard. Hello and welcome to Body Kindness, where happiness and health begin by being good to yourself. I'm your host and your coach, Rebecca Scritchfield, and once again, I have the amazingly talented Bernie Salazar here with me. Well, thank you, Becca, and I'm super happy to be here today. Well, I'm I'm grateful <laughs> for, for your participation, as always. Yes. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about gratitude. I think that... Um, it's a topic that if you really embrace it, it's, you get it and you just do it and you probably express gratitude in ways, you know, um, big and small. And I think there are other people who probably think it's a bunch of woo. So, <laughs> you know, I thought, um, you know, just being the time of year where we're grateful for uh, our family and friends and, um, the feast of Thanksgiving, it, you know, gratitude is more on the mind. And I thought we could maybe talk a little bit about how it improves your health and well-being. I'm totally up for it. Uh, I'm someone who, you know, can get caught day to day just kind of thinking about what needs to get done and, you know, uh, what I haven't gotten done or what I might not have yet. And uh, when you sent this topic over my way, it really uh, kind of gave me pause. And I was like, you know what, you you really do need to kind of start thinking about the things that you are grateful for, um, that you are ready possess. And, and to me, I, I can't wait to kind of jump in. And for anybody who thinks it's just a bunch of woo, uh, like Rebecca <laughs> said, um, let's see if we can't convert you. Let's see. I, I would love to have you thanking, um, um, the, the, the world that be, uh, for something in your life before the end of this podcast. Yes. I think that's great. Well, why don't we just dive in with um, a definition or just an interpretation and uh, of like what what is gratitude? How how would you describe gratitude to the listeners? You know, for me, uh, gratitude is just really um, uh, taking pause and appreciating what it is um, that is in your life that brings um, uh, joy, true happiness. Um, just taking pause. I mean, because right away when you ask for a definition, I always want to say, oh, the things you're grateful for. But I mean, it's <laughs> it's the word itself. But I mean, for me, it's it's because I thought about this. I knew you were going to ask. Ah, I got ahead of you this time. Mm -hmm. I knew you were going to ask about what I thought the definition of gratitude was. And for me, it's just truly taking pause and learning to appreciate um, those things around me that matter. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree 100%. Um, the root of gratitude, so the Latin word gratis, G-R-A-T-U-S, um, means pleasing or thankful. And so, and that's really what it's about at the core is to have a feeling of thankfulness for, you know, whatever it is you want to, um, you want to call into your gratitude circle <laughs> you know yeah. it, it that's one of the beauties of it is that it's it's defined um by what you choose to acknowledge as beneficial or meaningful in your life and you know it doesn't always have to be um good things that are happening to happening to you um you know, and I, I think we'll, I'll kind of save it a little bit for later. We don't have to dive in that heavy, but just a little teaser for those listening. You know, it is possible to express gratitude even when bad things happen to you in life. And it's, it's not like, you know, like I have a friend who, who lost her baby literally a week before the baby was due and she is in a terrible morning, um, and there's no way that she's saying, I'm so grateful this happened to me. But part of her healing and part of her need to find meaning of why this happened in her life and part of how she's rebuilding herself has come around trying to make a difference in other people's lives who are going through something similar. So she's looking for community and support and she's calling attention to um, to the issues that she has been facing to help raise awareness. And so, you know, that even when you're dealing with 
the most unthinkable and painful things in life, there's still hope for a light of gratitude. And, you know, I think that that will be something that'll be really, really interesting to kind of talk about a little bit later today. No, absolutely. I mean, that definitely is heavy. And, you know, my heart's with her and um, how, how much strength and courage must she have to be able to, you know, try to um, help others throughout that time. Um, for me, again, you know, when we talked about gratitude, it is hard sometimes to find it in those difficult situations. You know, you just um, explained a really serious and heavy situation, but something um, as maybe trivial as stubbing your toe and being thankful you didn't break it. <laughs> it, it can be that. It can and, always be worse. <laughs> yes, it could all, I could have broke it. Yeah. You know, and and um, in our show notes, uh, you had mentioned, you know, being thankful when it's hard to be thankful. Mm -hmm. And I know we're not there yet, but I just kind of, you know, I'm almost jumping the gun because that's sometimes where I find myself a lot of times is, well, how am I going to be thankful when I'm not where I, I want to be, mm -hmm. you know, or how am I going to be thankful when I'm still not, I still don't have this or that. And, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, if, uh, if our listeners are anything like me, that's where, you know, we might get some of those people who are thinking to themselves, well, oh, I don't know about this gratitude thing. Mm -hmm. You know, right away, you're starting off with that. How about let's go ahead and see if we can be grateful for just tuning into this podcast a bit <laughs> and see if we can change your mind. So Rebecca, yeah. to so, chime in because I, I honestly today I'm just, I am thankful for a lot of things. So mm -hmm. I, I am ready to share those whenever, whenever the time calls. You just let okay. me know. Okay. Well, um, I just want to see if I can tease out where you might have been heading. So when you talked about not being where you want to be, um, like, are you thinking like from the behavior change angle, like there's, you know, you want to improve a habit, self-care, a body kindness type habit, if you will, and finding it difficult to be grateful when you're not at the goal. See, I love it when you can rein me in and kind of get those thoughts out of me. So for me, you know, really having dove into body kindness and mm -hmm. really exploring body acceptance. I mean, I do find myself from time to time still going back to that, you know, maybe not necessarily a number on a scale. I'm not there, but maybe not, you know, passing by a mirror and not looking the way that I, I think I want mm -hmm. in my head to look. And... um and yeah, I'm like, gosh, you know, how do I find myself being grateful in those moments and and um, realizing that I've come so far and I've put in so much work and that no longer is what is defining me. And I'm noticing that my life has changed for the better in so many ways because I have let go of a lot of things that were previously weighing me down. And I am not talking about pounds. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's here's something to consider. Consider that gratitude is an important key to unlocking the door of happiness. I I completely buy that and I believe it wholeheartedly. Uh, some of the best experiences and moments that I've had in my life to date uh, have been when uh, I was able to truly just immerse myself in being thankful for um, an experience, an mm -hmm. opportunity, a loved one, um, a moment, you know, actually being in that moment. I think a lot of times we just forget to be present mm -hmm. and um, and those moments in my life where I was present and able to be thankful for what was going on, um, be it bad or good, you know, uh, you know, I did have a death in the family and being able to be present in that moment and mourn that person, um, has l allowed me to, to be at peace with that. So, I mean, it's just different things like that. No, yeah, I, I yeah. agree with what you're saying. Yeah. It's, you know, to me, I think it's important to see it, um, you know, as, as a practice. So it's, it's part of what you do to take good care of yourself. And it's very much gratitude is very much a part of the body kindness practice. Um, when you, you know, practice gratitude and in a, to me, I think it's very important to be honest. Um, you know, I don't believe in fake it till you make it. Um, I think that, 
it can feel disingenuous. And if you kind of deny how you're currently feeling and just lay that over with a bunch of gratitude, you know, sayings that it's not really going to create the effect in your mind, body, well-being connection that we're looking for, you know, and especially you brought up earlier the idea of body positivity, especially, you know, you can be a, you know, a person who's practicing body kindness, who is, who is, um, you know, learning to love and care for the body that you're in on the whole, Right. And everyone's going to be at a different stage of letting go of the scale, of letting go of diets, of trying to find out what works for them. It's not some sort of magical ceremony and then boom, you know, you're healed. So it, it, it is a journey and everyone's going to be at their own place. And, and really, you can have, you mentioned a moment earlier, you can have a moment where you're actually not feeling that great in your body or about your body, but maybe that is a fleeting moment that's going to come and go. And a way that you can embrace that moment is not by just slapping, gee, I love myself, you know, like on top of it, but find something, something good, something positive um, something compassionate and something real, you can say to yourself, even if it's not about your body, even if you need to take the conversation away from your body for a moment, um, and turn it into something else that this practice of gratitude is a way of shifting your mindset, shifting your tone to more kind and nurturing thoughts and words and feelings and this is you know in the book when I write about spiraling up in your mood and your emotions this is exactly what I'm talking about when you do that it's going to lead to better self-care choices Um, so this practice of gratitude is something that you can use when you feel like you're in you know not in a good space that whether it's you woke up already exhausted you know you didn't get enough sleep or you're stressed out about something, um, you know, the day's not going your way. And, you know, that first inclination you get is to, you know, grab from the candy dish or something. Mm-hmm. You can always pause and just kind of gently say what's happening and then use gratitude as a way to, you know, to kind of help you through and say, you know, um, you know, I'm tired right now or I'm, you know, I'm angry, I'm emotional, you know acknowledge how you're really feeling and um whether it's take a deep breath and then think of something that you can be grateful for um it can have a powerful impact to help you know just shift your mood state ever so slightly and that's what is going to help you know neutralize out your emotion and put you in a better place to kind of make the next good healthy makes me feel good self-care choice Yeah, no. And I mean, for me, this is something um, that I have practiced uh, just kind of naturally. Uh, And and not not, not to say that that it's come easy, Rebecca, Mm -hmm. because there have been times where it's hard to find good. But I do remember uh, in in a past position, job that I had, um, I literally did not like going to work. (laughs) So I would have to think of things on my way there that I was grateful for because I wasn't grateful to where I was having to go. (laughs) So I mean, finding things as, um, I guess, as simple as, you know, thank goodness that water came out of my shower this morning and it was warm. Or thank goodness that, you know, um, I have a car to drive in or thank goodness that there is electricity in my house. I mean, I Mm -hmm. would come up with some doozies and at the end of the day, I would um, truly think about those things that maybe I never thought about before or I would just end up laughing, which also put me in a better mood (laughs) going into where I was because I would just thank the world for a comb. I mean, whatever I could. So, I mean, there might be people out there who are like, I don't know, you know, if there's much that I'm thankful for, or it might be difficult, but just, um, in one of the articles that you sent me, um, it had talked about how this is something that you kind of have to put some work into, Mm -hmm. you know, even if it's just naming one thing a day that you're grateful for, like, Hey, I woke up today. 
you know, or um, check this out. I actually, uh, um, you know, had a cover to put over myself. I mean, um, I find it so interesting that being grateful for things in your life can contribute to your health in such significant ways. Um, one thing that I read, and I'm going to let you kind of expand on this a little bit more, Rebecca, mm -hmm. was the fact that um, practicing gratitude can actually help to el not eliminate, but lessen um, d some d depression type thoughts or feelings. Is that, is that, am I reading that right or, or how? Yeah. So, um, I will share in the show notes an awesome section from the greater good, um, website. It's all about the science of a meaningful life and they have an, um, expanding gratitude project. Um, lots of links that uh, listeners can explore, but when it, when it comes down to it, um, when someone is going through, you know, there's a spectrum of depression, um, and, you know, you're feeling negative emotions and the tendency is to isolate yourself, right? Put yourself on a little island. I'm not going to talk to nobody. I'm not going to tell anybody how I'm feeling. I'm not going to connect. I'm not going to engage. Um, and, and you can have those thoughts and feelings without ever being diagnosed with depression. Um, but the way that gratitude kind of reroutes you, if you will, um, that metaphor of finding a detour uh, is that it helps you to connect to others. So um, there's this way that gratitude is really about strengthening your relationships because it requires you to acknowledge people and things outside of yourself and just like you were saying I'm grateful I had a comb or I'm grateful I had hot water um you really start to think and acknowledge these gifts these blessings these um these you know these privileges that you have that help make you you or that help you go out there into your job even if you hate your job I mean Hey, I've got a paycheck, so that means I'm getting food. Yeah. That means rent's getting paid, you yes. know. Um, and, and and I have had my fair share of clients who have hated their jobs, and it's like <laughs> we would often talk about, okay, let's like in a year, you know, um, you know, let's plan that we have another job within a year, but we ain't getting another job tomorrow. So today, yeah. what can we do to, you know, curb emotional eating? Say. Um, you know, to get a joyful workout in, maybe go to yoga, you know, restorative, something kind, treat your body well, and then make sure you have, you know, a nourishing dinner that you can eat with pleasure. And just to kind of disassociate the negativity of the job um, from, you know, the, the, the lack of self-care, you know, because that would be the frustrating thing. Like, now here's another reason to hate my job. It's making me not, not take care yeah, of myself. Exactly. And and so that's part of what it does. It really helps to shift your own mood and help you make better choices. And that's a huge benefit to your body kindness practice. And remember, when I say better choices, it's not, yay, you ate a whole plate of broccoli. You know, yeah. body kindness is a better choice. Could actually be that you did order pizza because you wanted a night off of cooking and cleaning, but it wasn't, you don't get a pass fail. It's not, oh, we ordered pizza. And so who cares about nutrition and let's go stuff ourselves. It's we're going to get some pizza, you know, we've got some carrots, we've got some pears, you know, kiwi fruit, whatever. We're going to put together a simple dinner, an easy dinner, and we're going to enjoy it. Um, so, exactly. you know, you define what body kindness is, um, but it should feel good to you. Um, it, it What your decisions you're making in those moments should feel, the decision should feel good, or you should be looking forward to the outcome of making that decision. Like I sleep better, I'm digesting my food better, I have more energy. Um, so that's the thing that you wanna shift. Um, but just to kind of circle back to your question about depression, I mean, it can help prevent people who are at higher risk for depression from going into a more depressive state by boosting your your mood and your short-term emotions so you have more positive emotions you're more optimistic um and that is what lines you up for better health and happiness um it even 
has been shown to boost your immune system. So, you know, we're always trying to do everything to fight off colds and flu. Maybe it's not a multivitamin. Maybe it's a daily dose of gratitude. Yeah, being thankful. Absolutely. Um, And again, for our listeners out there, you know, for me, um, I kind of had mentioned that it's something I did naturally. I didn't say it came naturally. This is definitely something that, you know, I've had to practice. But I've noticed that um, the more grateful I am for the things that I I do have in my life, um, in some weird way, I tend to attract more of those positive things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's so easy to let your mind shift towards the negative sometimes. um, And it's not as easy to let your your mind shift towards that positive, that that grateful way of thinking. But um, once you do, I know for me, it's it's really served to also attract the things in my life that I'm I'm needing or wanting more of. Yeah, I I just I wanted to share that because it is something that I I firsthand have been able to experience. Yeah. And and, and the other thing that I would add is it's quite possible to have like two opposing and kind of mixed emotions at the same time, you know, and this will kind of segue us into discussion about how do you handle gratitude even when things are bad. But, you know, um, it's possible that you really are going through something difficult and it's not to ignore that difficulty but you can also in that sort of in you know you have two hands you know in one hand this is a really crappy difficult thing or I'm I'm really struggling with this new habit um it's been hard to find the time to exercise you know that's one that I know bothers most people um it's hard to get the sleep you know, I want to actually feel enough energy to exercise even. And it's okay to acknowledge those difficulties and say you, you know, set a goal that you were going to work out three days that week and you worked out zero, you know, that's disappointing. It's it's disappointing and it can make a person want to give up or beat yourself up or, you know, just say, oh, that's it. I'm never going to change. And that, that is downward spiraling. That negativity is just going to breed more negativity and and the truth is you know we do make mistakes and it does suck if you set a goal that you did not achieve Mm -hmm. but you know how can you feel that negativity that sort of disappointment maybe some guilt around not accomplishing a goal that you had hoped to achieve but then look at what's in on the other hand you know and say maybe even something like on the other hand, I'm very grateful because for the first time, I'm actually acknowledging my disappointment as opposed to tuning out and zoning out with a bunch of food, right? Yeah. And I've had that happen with clients where they've, and it's it has to do with your growth in self-compassion, where you're able to actually face that you're not... Um, living up to an expectation but rather than saying I'm a bad person which leads to shame you kind of just observe and say gosh I'm really disappointed by this behavior that that I'm not exercising like I wanted to I set that goal I didn't reach it Um, but then you know enter in gratitude you know What can you be grateful for in that situation? Did you catch up on sleep? Was, did you meet an important work deadline? Did you avoid emotional eating that you think otherwise would have happened? You know, that maybe happened the week before because you were, you know, better able to just name your feelings and your emotions. Maybe you're still working on your planning and time management, but that's getting better, you know, so I do think that there is a strong role for gratitude and in, in, in self-compassion as well. But I want to ask you, what think of a recent bad time, bad experience when there was something bad in your life and share a little bit about what was going on and how in any small way gratitude may have helped you. Wow. Um, so I had kind of touched on the fact that I had, you know, lost somebody close to me um, uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. And um, that was a really, really low period uh, 
in my life as in anybody's life when you lose somebody who you just love tremendously I, I had lost uh, my aunt who mm -hmm. um, was just an amazing amazing woman and such a loss to our family and I remember being um, at her funeral services and I was um, asked to speak and um, you know right away my heart was just so heavy and, and just I was in so much pain over this loss um, but I just remember opening my mouth and the first thing that came out and that nothing was written you don't write mm -hmm. prepare for those types of things but the first thing that came to my I came out of my mouth was thanking everybody who had attended uh, for attending the celebration it just and I, I it took me back mm -hmm. I mean I literally it wasn't not it, who says that right I mean mm -hmm. here we are uh, and I literally thanked everybody for attending this celebration and then it made me pause um, and I just kind of went with it because I did, it did unfold um, as a celebration of who she was and the life that she led. Um, and I think that that conversation that I had with those in attendance that day, that, that talk resonated more than um, me jumping in and saying that, you know, how sad I was or yeah. the negativity of having lost her. And if, you had known my aunt Rebecca, you would have known that those were the right words that were placed in my mouth that day. It wasn't a sad event. It was a tr tremendous loss, but it was a true celebration of a life so abundant in joy and love and mm -hmm. a life that had been lived that, that it was a celebration. Heck yeah. I mean, come on. Imagine, you know, it's your time. Yeah, yeah. Do you want someone, you know, <laughs> truthfully celebrating I, I would love your existence? <laughs> I mean, this is a whole separate podcast. And there's, if you want to look at something really cool, it's called The Order of the Good Death. And there are some amazing women that are totally redefining how we define death in America. Um, I'll, now that I did not expect to bring this up, but I will include some links in the show notes. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's amazing what they're doing. Um, and you know, I think that at least for the context of, of gratitude in this topic mm -hmm. that I think you chose the best words, it sounds like you were really honoring her life and it sounds like people really resonated for how you chose to frame. Well, Rebecca, they just, it just came out. It was, yeah. it, you know, it was one of those things where it just came out and, you know, unfortunately we had lost her to cancer. So mm -hmm. it's one of those things where, you know, you, you can sit there and think about why mm -hmm. and why too early. And, you know, she had two daughters and, mm -hmm. you know, there's, it's so... Mm -hmm. natural sometimes mm -hmm. I don't want to say easy because nothing is easy in death but it was so natural to try to go towards the negative of why she had was gone mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. we 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 wanted to see her go but I mean mm -hmm. you know but at the end of the day it was and 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 I bring up such a, a heavy topic in relation to gratitude because it allowed me to make peace with it and I use that as an example, day to day, Rebecca, when I have those struggles, uh, being grateful for for things throughout my day to day life, I was like, no, listen, if you know, at my aunt's funeral, I was able to be grateful for mm -hmm. for all that she had contributed to my life. I can sure as heck be grateful that I I chose to do this instead of that, or I I'm finding the good in this not so good situation. Right. You know, and that's what I'm hoping our listeners are getting out of this. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think you just nailed it. What you're basic, you know, you said finding the good in this not so good situation. And that's kind of what I alluded to in the beginning with my story of a friend who, who, yeah. who lost her baby, you know, unthinkable tragedy. Um, and loss. And so, you know, we're, we're both hitting these stories of loss. And even if it's not, it's not about finding, fi necessarily finding the goodness in the loss, but how has this loss changed me for the better in any way? So you're saying that not just losing your aunt and going through that traumatic event, but being one of the chosen speakers, you know, to kind of lead her memory that 
that instilled something in you that said appreciate what you have each day appreciate the people who are still with you absolutely i mean not just that in that time if i was able to really just speak about um the joy of a life well lived and and just find a a reason to celebrate in such a sad time you know i do use that as a marker Mm -hmm. you know and that was one of the most significant losses of my life to date you know and uh uh, yeah, I use that as a marker. And if I can get through that by finding some gratitude in that very sad situation, you better believe that I'm going to go out of my way to find the good in a bad day to day situation. And, um, you know, there's a lot of listeners there. I have a lot of friends who, you know, we will get together. And the first thing we do, and I, I love it because it was mentioned in the article that, that I had just read. The first thing you do is you sit there and talk about all the things you haven't got or the, what you haven't done or mm-hmm. how horrible this situation is and one idea that was mentioned in the article was why don't you get together and just talk about something good that happened or um, maybe something that you're grateful for we don't need to wait around till Thanksgiving to mm-hmm. sit around and talk about the things that we're grateful for I mean I'm truly grateful for our listeners and I'd love to see what it is that you guys are grateful for and I do challenge you uh, Rebecca I'm gonna throw this out there to our, our, <laughs> our listeners I would love to to just have them send us a couple notes or a line or a word, a syllable as to what they're grateful for. Yeah. And I mean, I, I accept that challenge. And, and, um, you know, it's something that I personally plan to do, uh, at least for the month of November, but who knows, I might get crazy and do it till the end of the year. Um, I love it. <laughs> I, will, I will Instagram, uh, I will Instagram a picture uh, for the month of November of the things that I'm grateful for. Okay. I, you you heard it here. Okay. All right. Me too. Let's use um, the hashtag body kindness uh, yeah. for those so that we can track each other and see what everybody else is doing. So you guys can participate um, on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, I mean, we're on Twitter and all that too, but let's try to stick to Instagram for the most part. And if you just do hashtag body kindness and just – You know, I mean, it could be picture of an amazing meal, could be picture of, um, you know, you enjoying your favorite hobby or any anything at all, a quote you love. Yes, anything. And that's why I get so excited about it. Like you just, you know, just whatever you're grateful for. Believe me, I have a grandmother that would be grateful if, you know, um, uh, somebody remembered to give her a call. All right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like, take a picture of a phone. Hashtag body kindness. Let's get this going. That, this is yeah, the that. easiest and the greatest <laughs> of challenges. It, it could be very beneficial. So let's yeah, do this. that. That's a really good point when you talk about picking up the phone and everything like that, because I think that it kind of encapsulates that um, this, you know, this idea that you know, gratitude is really about building and strengthening your relationships and your connection to other people, which has a massive impact on the way you talk to yourself, the choices that you make. Um, And, you know, interestingly, what it also does, it makes you more not likely not only to appreciate those gifts and those blessings that you already have, but it can also have this um, growth impact where it motivates you to um, create even more good in the world. So that sort of pay it forward mindset. Um, And there's a sociologist, George Simmel, who calls it the moral memory of mankind, which I just, I love that idea that, you know, gratitude is kind of like, how we I know like how we kind of go out there and help make the world um better and just kind of spreading gratitude so I guess we're starting it on we're gonna do our moral memory of mankind on 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 Instagram but um you know just see does it make an impact on your life and 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 it it, maybe it makes an impact in that moment that day maybe a week of doing it for seven days makes an overall impact um and I just think it's something that it's a great time of year to look forward to it. It's something to be open to. It's free. Doesn't yeah. cost anything. <laughs> for that one. <laughs> uh, all, all it really costs is your moment of time to just stop and think about what's one good thing. And if you have, you know, 10 seconds, you could do it. If you have a minute, you can come up with three good things. And that has also been studied. There's some magic to the idea of naming three good things on a daily basis. I will share a link um, to that so you can look it up. But 
anything you can do I think would be good um and before we kind of wrap up our conversation for today, I just want to have us to have a really quick chat about the holiday season um, when you're listening, whether it's Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, any of that. New Year's, we know that we're, you know, it's like Halloween's over, time to, you know, do some more celebrating. And yeah. this this is our food season and our celebratory season. And I've seen a lot of clients struggle with food guilt or guilt because they missed a workout and everything like that. So this is something that I want to address. So what's what's one tip that you could give to all the listeners who they're like, oh my God, that's me. I yeah. always, you know, I always make myself feel bad if I miss a workout or, you know, yeah. like, you know, I, I make myself work out in order to have fun at the company party. Like, and, 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 and they know that that's kind of BS and they want to fix it this year. Yeah. So what's your piece of advice? You know, for me, especially being a new dad and going through these first holiday seasons with my daughter, I am looking for ways to incorporate, um, health and body kindness in with our holidays so for example you know um thanksgiving's coming up can i find a, a turkey trot you know um can i take my daughter on that um you know for halloween you know let's go to a pumpkin patch let's be active let's not just and not there's anything wrong with this you know going to the grocery store and getting a pumpkin but let's walk around a bit and select the perfect pumpkin for our family you know so it's it's trying to take the thought or the stress out of getting that workout in or, or doing certain things. You know, um, um, one thing that I plan on doing as well is just really planning out our um, holiday meals more so. What's mm -hmm. the story behind them? What's going into them? Why is that going into them? Um, my daughter is just starting to really get into food mm -hmm. um, now and... I've had that oh boy moment again mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, if she reaches for something that I'm putting in my mouth, it better darn well be good, you know, because for the longest time, you know, um, I was okay with putting something bad in my, you know, quote unquote bad in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely don't want her reaching for anything that isn't nourishing to all of us as a family. So that's kind of where I'm going. Uh, so my tip would be just, you know, how can you incorporate um, who you want to be in the direction you're going in to live that healthy life that you deserve into your holidays so that it's not as stressful for you? Yeah, I can dig what you said. I think my one piece of guidance around the sort of good, bad food idea, because I know you and I know what you mean. Um, so... You know, well, I mean, I should, and, and it's the truth. Okay. You know, I want her to reach for the most nourishing thing for her body. You know, and I haven't always chosen the most nourishing thing for mine. But right. that's what I'm really thankful for when it comes to my daughter is uh, allowing me to get to look very closely at um, um, what it means to really care for a body. Mm -hmm. And that little body being hers. And then how does that now transfer over into how I've cared for mine? Yeah, no, I, that's exactly what I was thinking you meant. And you know, yeah. the, 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 the big picture of that is not, you know, you're not saying, oh, I'm burning. I eat clean. I never eat any sugar and I'm not having pumpkin pie or whatever, but it's more like in your past experience, you would say, ah, eh, screw it. Who cares? Nobody's watching. And whatever it is, pizza, ice cream, cookies, just, you know, burger fries. Just do it. Like yeah. you said, it wasn't that like, hey, touch in because we, you know, like you said earlier in this podcast, you eat pizza. That's not bad. That yeah. could be really good. But yeah. I would mindlessly do things that weren't no nourishing me uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually in any way. Right. I was mindlessly just indulging in things that it could have been cardboard and I would have just swallowed it the same way. <laughs> You know? <laughs> exactly. So, so, want, yeah. so a good holiday for this time of year challenge is really, I mean, so just really to just enjoy and savor. Yes. And that includes the event, you know, the experiences you're having, the people you're there with Safe, and, and the enjoying the food. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, taking time to notice more than, than maybe in the past, I would have just gravitated towards maybe, you know, the, uh, what was being served that day. But I mean, um, being able to kind of open my eyes to more, 
because I find myself. And again, you know, I'm going to sit here and talk about my daughter all day because it's given me a new outlook on life. You know, I see her staring at a fan with amazement and I'm like, gosh, when was the last time I ever thought about how amazing a fan was, you know, or this holiday, I can't wait to, you know, have her look at some of the decorations that are going to um, be around our house with with new eyes and and um, that's I'm grateful for that and that's what I really want to make sure are being tied into these holidays is a sense of of presentness. Yeah, no, that makes complete sense to me. And um, you know, you absolutely can make choices. You know, eat with your eyes first. What looks appealing to you? Taste it. Does it taste appealing? And if it does, go for it. Enjoy yourself. And and when you're mindfully eating, you know, these are all skills of intuitive eating. And you're more likely to stop when you're comfortably full. Wait again until you feel hungry. And you're you're not going to be crazy about food because you just are really tuned into your body. And I think that's a good goal for anyone. If you have kids or not, it's not like you're trying to be the most perfect person. You're trying to enjoy yourself, but also be kind to your body and respect it and know that even if you can't do hard workouts, you know, one minute of plank is better than nothing. And you can always build from there. Um, And you should just generally feel good about the ways you are taking care of yourself so absolutely absolutely and i know we got to get going but i just want to chime in with one one more thing one more thing (laughs) and this is in relation to moving your body you know it's really ironic um what we choose to be grateful for or not i worked at um i worked at a clinic for a while and there was a particular patient who was um just getting more comfortable with walking again and um when we started talking about this topic, I thought to myself, and here I am, you know, being hard on myself for judging myself for not being grateful for not running uh, as far as I used to or as quick as I used to. And it's all relative, right? You know, the fact mm-hmm. that I'm able to to really start moving my body in a way that maybe somebody else isn't. And not that you have to play the compare game, but it's just finding that, that type of gratitude out there. And what you just said kind of uh, brought that that idea back up. Okay. Well, I like it. Um, All right. So we will be connecting on social media then with the body kindness hashtag. And um, until we chat next time, I am so grateful you're in my life. Absolutely. So grateful you guys are tuning in. And remember, let's get this challenge in. What are we grateful for on Instagram? Uh, Hashtag body kindness. 